all treated one way. Now Oklahoma City was a false flag. Timothy McVeigh was clearly uh, a victim of uh, of MK Ultra type mind control, which is of course still being done. Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber, was a admitted and on record uh, volunteer at Harvard for MK Ultra when they, he volunteered. So wake up to that. They fried his brain, ladies and gentlemen, and they made him a Manchurian candidate. So if you don't think they can, believe me, they can. In fact, if they wanted to, boy, I'm sitting here right in this spot, and they could send a bomb and miss me by 13 inches. If they can do that, believe me, they can mind control you. Because you are mind controlled. On a general level, we're all mind controlled. When I woke up to it, it's unbelievable. I annoy my wife constantly because I'm watching television and I can't stop revealing the truth about the bullshit that I'm watching. And she's just sort of like, I'm sick of it already, you know? And I, I'm sorry, but it's the truth. I mean, this, this drivel and shit that people are loving to watch, it's just unbelievably sickening to me. I don't know how else to put it because it's just so, it's so deceptive, you know? And I think things like Occupy Hartford today at 5 o'clock at Bushnell Park and tomorrow with We Are Change Connecticut at 10 a.m., we're going to make a difference because we're going to explain that these movements, you see, everybody knows that it's the banks and they're saying the Federal Reserve, but, but you're really getting co-opted by, again, the Obama Nauts are out there in force. They've got ACORN and all these other, everyone's out there going wild. And, uh, and the same thing with the infiltration from the, the communist side, the, the, the George Soros crew. They're all getting their, uh, their infidels and, in, and putting, you know, putting their uh, disinformation clowns in there you know, to try to tell you all this and that. But the essence is that the banks are the problem, and uh, we have to keep that on that. And the fact that um, you know, a lot of this, uh, it's not, you, you can't guarantee people jobs. This is insane. Yeah, you're talking about communism. We just can't go that route. We have to understand that we just have to be self-sufficient, get the government off our back, get these taxes off our back, get these Ill illegal and, and illegitimate fraudulent debt w wiped away and, you know, clear the board, clear the eraser, you know, to just do it. That's what we need to do. We don't need to ask for any help. The government is not going to help us. It will never help us. It has brought us to this place because the people controlling it are moving for that agenda. So you're playing directly into their hands. Anyway, Occupy Hartford today at 5 o'clock. We are change 10 a.m. tomorrow at uh, Bushnell Park uh, also. You can go to uh, We Are Change Connecticut, uh, We Are Change CT.org for details. And on Facebook, you can go to Occupy Hartford, Occupy uh, Connecticut, and also Occupy Hartford CT. Um, let's move it out there. Let's get the people to, to understand what this is really about, that, that this criminal drug trade uh, and everything that, that is all part of it, uh, it is all connected. These bankers are the, are the, the drug launderers. It is, a, it is an even exchange across the board. It is a circle, a perfect circle. They bring the drugs in. They're protected. Those that are not protected are arrested. Those that are the competition are arrested. Those that are using it are arrested. That's part of the whole plan. To keep the private system going. Then you say, well, hey, this is all conspiracy theory. Well, it really isn't, because I spent an amazing amount of time. I can't even quantify it, and I can quantify it in years, probably two years, researching all of this information directly, and especially the owners of these corporations. Who owns the majority shares in these corporations? You know, it all comes back to the same ruling class families. It's it, Reed Zelvier controls all of the uh, the, the the media, uh, the the magazines and the trade journals and the newspapers. The, the excuse me, the uh, medical journals and all many many school books that are used worldwide they set the agenda like I'm talking all today about setting agenda this is what they do they give you this you don't have a choice I mean think about it you go to school and you get a school book if it's a public school or if it's a Catholic school in fact my son his book is uh, was printed by Rita Zelvier um, 
and it, it was it, it, it the it's unbelievable. It's Harcourt H A R C O U R T is owned by Rita Zelvier, and it's got a pyramid on the math book. The cover is is literally a pyramid for seventh grade math. Now, oh, that's just a conspiracy theory. Well, look into what they own. That's what I'm saying. Dig beneath all of the information that you're getting tonight, today. Uh, certainly, uh, you will find that it's all accurate, and you will find that it's really leading towards this collectivism, this one world, one thought, one religion government. I haven't even touched on the fact that that's why they're moving us towards a secular society. Religion is going to be like the green religion. Now, this could take a long time from their eyes, but they, they're ultimately going. I mean, I don't see, I could see us taking back the government and taking back the, the country far sooner than we could then them crushing religion personally. But um, that is what they want to do. They also, but they want to kill us too. So they could target through various soft kill methods and various uh, ways. I mean, it's just unbelievable. I, I know it sounds a little off sometimes, but all of this is true. I wouldn't spend all the time that I do uh, here and trying to spread this information um, at, you know, for, for, for nothing other than humanity and the, and the fact that we really do need to change this world. Uh, we must be the, the change we, we need to see in the world. It's just absolutely essential that we, we stand up to this. Um, and recognize it. First of all, recognize it. Once you recognize it, then you have a battle plan. Then you say, well, what can I do about it? Well, expose the fact that the government uh, bail out the TARP money, $220 million of TARP money went to MSNBC. Now, what do they need a bailout for? Expose it. Of course, because it's a propaganda payment. It's exactly what it is. It's an agenda payment. Then the front organizations that they pay their money through for political con contributions, the appointments. Didn't anyone ever think about when Obama appointed all the same people, basically Bush had, he could put the same cats in place, and you think you were going to get change? I did. I thought I was going to get change for about, I would say, about six or eight months. When he started breaking all his promises, I started realizing that he was no different than anyone else. In fact... He is a good teleprompter reader because he can't speak a sentence without it. Again, um, this is teleprompter free. We don't, we don't deal with that. We just talk. And if you'd like to talk or have anything that you'd like to say or include any commentary on anything I've discussed today, feel free to call in live. We are live at 772-905-3018. Again, that's 772-905-3018, and I'd be happy to take some calls. It would be nice to hear from some people regarding anything uh, that we've been covering that might interest you. Uh, I do have some detailed information continu continuing about the prison system, since we uh, really it is really the subject matter that I've been covering today. And the phony drug war... Internationally, the war on drugs provides a cover for U.S. intervention and control of other countries. It adds to the military budget, it increases foreign sales of U.S. weaponry, and it keeps the price of drugs up and the costs down. Domestically, the drug war is not about decreasing drug use or drug supply. It incarcerates millions of felons on the basis of mandatory minimum sentencing. It provides profits for the privatized prison companies. It provides funds to U.S. organizations and individuals through drug money laundering. The drug war allows covert agencies to use it as a source of black funding. Of course. Of course. That's exactly what we've been discussing. Wells Fargo and Wachovia laundering the drug money, getting caught, the Sinaloa t cartel in league with the CIA, bringing meth and cocaine across the border into the United States. Where these kids, these meth factories, will 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 set up and they'll they'll get the meth out there and they'll lock those people up and let all these other people bring the same drugs and do the same thing. It's it's like it's ridiculous. You have you have. It's funny. Two guys walk down the street. They're both drug dealers. This one gets arrested. The other one ah here here here's the here's the money or your or you get the pass or I mean do you see this? This is what it's all about. It is worse than the mafia. Because they, they'll send the army out after you. And they've done it. They did it for Noriega. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, boy. If this isn't the most truth you've heard in one day, I don't know what to tell you, but I'm telling the truth about everything. All right. Um, let's continue here. The drug war inflates police spending, of course, and revenues, and that's why they seize assets, which is, again, unconstitutional. There was a case in California in the late 90s where a millionaire, a guy was a millionaire, he had a million dollar land, it was attached to a to a forestry area in, in somewhere in, in, in Northern California, and they wanted the land, this to, to they really wanted the land. They claimed he was growing marijuana, they seized the land, went there and shot him, killed him, seized the land, and uh, he, yeah, they seized the land, killed him, and his wife was there, she saw the whole thing, and they of course found no marijuana. She sued and all of this, there's nothing, they didn't prosecute nothing, they took the land, and she lost the land. Uh, you can Google that, you know, uh, California millionaire's land, you know, seized by drugs, seized for marijuana that was never found, and murdered, you know, something along those lines. Uh, and you'll find it. It's, it's an unbelievable story. I'm just, again, going off the top of my head here. It was in California. He was a millionaire. He was a wealthy guy. Um, and they said that they claimed that he had marijuana growing. They, they seized, went to seize his land. They killed him uh, without any resistance. They, they killed uh, Bill Cooper the same way because he refused to uh, serve. You know, he, he missed a court date. Uh, they corner you in and then they kill you. Ruby Ridge shot a 13-year-old kid in the back running to tell his dad. This is real. I mean, this is, this is the tyranny. You see it going on the streets in New York right now. They lock a whole bunch of kids, people, people going, going across the bridge. They, they lead them across the bridge. Then they close them off and start locking them all up. Yeah, yeah, keep going, move orderly. You see it, and then they're hitting them, they're kicking them. You see what's going on, it's moving. What about the 2009... Uh, in Pittsburgh in 2009 at the G20 with the, the, L, the LRADs, the long-range acoustic devices, blowing out people's eardrums. It's crazy. And then the, the, the Toronto G20 with all the, with all the carnage out there and well, the, a lot of violence started from you know, some people raising, raising, raising noise. But the police went out of control. This is all on record. It was in a movie called Into, Into the Fire that you could see on YouTube for free. Um, Into the Fire, good film. It's unbelievable how much violence and, and, and uh, police activity there was. I mean, they we're moving into this police state, and it's going to cost a ton of money. And where do you think they're getting the money from? And who are they going to incarcerate? And then when you don't have anything, they take your property. And then another one down. Okay. All right, so then what does this continue to do? Inner city repression increases. It masks it, it masks the attack on civil liberties. Of course it does. It increases the number of persons incarcerated in private prisons. The number of people in America using illegal drugs is said to be down appreciably from the high in 1979. However, the phony drug war, which the ruling junta has carried out, is responsible for little of this decrease, except insofar as they have put, out, put millions of Americans in prison on drug charges. Crack cocaine use is down, for example, primarily because people were smart enough to see its devastating effect to crack addicts. There are two major approaches to mind-altering drugs, large-scale incarceration for drug users and military action to stop drug production internationally, decriminalization and treatment. The American criminal junta takes the first approach because of all the monetary benefits, of course. Now, 60 years ago, we solved the alcohol problem with prohibition. Crime was rampant, drug gangs battled on our streets, bootleggers sold their wares everywhere, even to children. Police could do nothing. The vast profits of liquor smuggling fueled corruption and violence, and the drug scourge seemed to, to uh, poise to topple America. But on December 5th, 1933, we ended prohibition and made alcohol legal, which is what I said earlier. And that is true. That is really how it happened. So then in South America, coca, which was safe as coffee, but it's illegal in the United States, so we have cocaine smugglers, dealers, and sellers. Opium is safer than tobacco in the East. Since it's illegal in America, we have heroin smugglers who bring in heroin a hundred times more powerful than used in the East. And of course, it's used by, it's brought in by the CIA through uh, the military. We have a hundred, in fact, today is the 10th anniversary of the military uh, occupation of Afghanistan. And there are still a hundred thousand troops there. Now, where is this I'm bringing all the troops home. 